to that yeah, aspect. Again, bullet, I mean, obviously, speed skills and tactical um, mm -hmm. vision is the most important stuff. And it's very hard to be outplayed positionally in one plus one because, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is there? Someone. Yeah. It goes back down to, you know, you blunder your queen and it's game over. It doesn't matter if you've built your advantage for the last 30 moves. I don't know what happened with Yulia's position, but how did her, she lose all her pawns? Just slowly. Ouch. Ouch. Oh no. So rook d8, rook d2, okay. I mean, rook e7, probably she will make g6 at some point or g5 just to not, um, well, blunder. <laughs> I would personally go for say. every single pawn, <laughs> but. I think um, Anna will have a more objective way of playing the position. Right. Ouch. Yeah. That was a bit painful. Okay, I think Julia is already tilting. I mean, it's yeah. difficult because, okay, you know that the match is over and crapping some in motivation is not hard to find. I mean, it's yeah. hard. I just want to see something that's not Bishop of Fate, please. Oh, no. Mm. <laughs> Here we go again. Um, but I, I do think that this tournament, well, through this match at least, probably for Yulia, she's gonna realize that her openings need a little bit of work, especially if playing people who are people with a little bit more experience and just a little bit more, you know. Well, I think that the only two things which I could witness from this match is okay, she needs to improve her openings and she needs to well be Except objective. queen trades. <laughs> yeah. Except Except queen trades and be objective to the position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because this kind of tricky chess doesn't work against an experienced player like uh, like Anna. I mean, it mm -hmm. works against lower opponents, obviously, but it will not work against players like Anna. And that's basically the two big um, differences in this match. I mean, that's where um, a lot of people struggle with improvement, right? If they keep getting stuck in their old habits, they're just not... You know, you can stay at your current level by beating people around you or people worse than you but to really improve you have to make changes and Yulia is still young I have lots of faith in her um, to implement those changes but throughout this bullet match it's just been very obvious what Dude, that knight is on b8 well it's not so bad it's starting <laughs> c6 and a6 I mean like if you want to find some pluses we will true true yeah it is at least defending it's doing its job the knight uh, is the best protector of the king yeah, honestly, it is pretty much also the only protector of the king, as we're gonna probably run into something along the lines of our oh, rook a2, rook a1, and rook to a7. And I mean, we don't have much. to make it too obvious with queen a2 if you can make it with <laughs> rook a1. <laughs> yeah, can't possibly make it any more obvious. Also, like, you know, like she can still run away in any mm -hmm. case, so it's not like that it would have been mated. Yeah. Now the next thing we should try to do is to change the bishop or to improve our knight. How can I improve our knight? Knight c1, knight e3, knight b4. That is something which is typical. Okay. Yeah, that would be really funny. Knight c or oh, knight f4 now is the same idea. Okay, mm -hmm. she wants to double her rooks on the c file, which is also looking nice. And now already like I can. Well, it's difficult if I keep the rooks on the board. Knight f4 is not running into a mate. No, it's not probably, but it was interesting. Huh. Okay, well, I mean, Black's pieces have more or less been stuck in this little cubicle over here, so. Okay, queen takes h7 and is also coming. I mean, it's probably like a white choice. Well, maybe this end game is not that clear because it is it is equal material and... I mean, like, yes, she lost her advantage. Mm-hmm. But still, the white king is a lot safer, and this will decide the game. I mean, right. because in bullet, you need time to defend, and this is very hard. Now, bishop f4. Bishop f4. Well, the e5 potentially. e5 is still fine, actually. Maybe. <laughs> I think well, queen g7. Seven. Seven. Yeah. Right. Okay, now bishop d8 coming in. Mm hmm Right, mm. and she will blunder something at queen some f7 point. and queen takes d5, and oof. That will be hard. E2 is probably worth a try. Okay, well, worth that. Knight e7. Oh, and that's just a free queen. Yeah, it's a Oh, oh, wait. You thought it was a free queen, but that was beautiful. I mean, 
Yulia defended this position. <laughs> yeah, it's a troll. Wow. Okay, that that was very well played by Yulia, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, apart from the fact that she was lost for most of the game, she was able to hold it and come up with that F1 and knight E3 at the very end. That's that's going to make this game a draw. And, you know... You know what that. actually like is a, is a thing about like making a draw when you like are like up with with a score, mm-hmm. you want time to pass. You understand? Right. Yeah, so what obviously. She could have, I mean, like she's a fair player, but what you can do in these moments are just to move Stall, around. The goal. Yeah. <gasps> no, just to gain time because right, right. time is the crucial factor of winning the match. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, here we have the Polish opening again. Um, probably not the best opening guys to be using in official matches. Knight to g4 is incoming, followed by some very nasty threats. Knight to g4 is still incoming, followed by some nasty threats because they did not solve the issue of the fact that, you know, you still have a fork on e3 coming. Okay, knight c4, can I? Um, no, I cannot take well, on h2 and play queen five, h4. Right. Yeah. But, oof. I mean, yeah, well, is the it, openings uh, are not in Yulia's favor. That's really sure. not. But I think a b4 opening is pretty much just going on tilt, trying to. Yeah, but anyway, it's difficult already because it's very hard to find motivation. That's mm-hmm. the thing. Yeah, quite quite unfortunate positions. Now you see the um, weakness of black squares to be exploited in the most um, well technical <laughs> or demonstrative way. Yes. Bad bishop against strong knight, and the queen exchange, of course. Of course, had to go with the queen exchange. Yeah. Uh, now you never, ever, ever want to give up this knight for this bishop. This bishop is quite useless. Uh, yeah. Doesn't really have any clear ideas. And this knight is on a very nice outpost and makes sure that this pawn on d3 will, you know, be a backwards pawn for the rest of its life. By the way, did Julia win any bullet game? Ah, yes, she won the one where the, plund- the, the queen was plundered. No, this was not bullet. This was three plus one, right? Uh, I'm not even quite familiar. There was a draw. I don't think she has won a bullet game yet. Yeah, that's that's what I was. Yeah, she hasn't won a bullet game yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so swapping off the rooks. Well, this you cannot afford because an a2 is too loose. So you should Mm -hmm. somehow try to get some compensation on the weak c5 pawn. But okay, king f6, king e5 at some point is coming. Yeah, we like to joke about how positional. It doesn't really matter that much in end games, but usually if you have a lot of weak pawns, in which case Yulia does, right? Weak pawns. Um, you don't really want to swap pieces because then you just have less pieces to defend them. Yes, but so. now of course it's a positional <laughs> killing game. Oh no, not these end games that I get into against Grandmasters. Like, I'm there for two hours. Yeah. It's, it's- I'm, I literally have PTSD from playing these positions where I just lose. And it's like a very slow loss too. And you're like, man, this is really not it. Like you want to resign, but you don't have an excuse to resign because you're not down material, right? Well, okay. Yeah, but still losing on time is also fair. So there will be probably two more bullet games. Um, let's see if Yulia will play any other openings. I am personally really hoping for something that is not the Bishop of Eight winner. Okay, this oh, works too. You cannot be serious. <laughs> oh, wow, we have a novelty on move four with Queen D7. Um, very well-known line, very old line as well. I mean, most winner lines are fairly old, but. Yes, I used to play some games with Queen D7, not so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's one way to defend your g7 pawn right you got this f5 it's it's really not that bad i agree it's it's anything is preferred to bishop f8 at this point anything quite literally anything i'm happy to see this hmm. uh, but it will well, probably be these positions are very tough because they're very close so you have to find some way to open it up having the bishop pair but it's not easy to see how mm-hmm actually now i believe like julia should have played this kind of variation more often Mm -hmm. because i like the positions she gets here much better (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, I think I think we've roasted Yulia's openings enough for the rest of the year. Um, but yeah, jokes aside, this is this seems a lot easier to handle than a position where your pieces are all in the back rank. At least here you have ideas with like pushing g5, potentially sacrificing on e5. I mean, I think actually even okay here's oh this works. All right, oh, yeah, queen d2 check. Well, it's probably not the most accurate, but in a bullet game, uh, you want to be where you worry a little bit less about accuracy and a little bit more about your aggression. So you want to be a little bit yeah, more aggressive. True. Even so, like if king g1 and king h2, where is the compensation? Right. Uh, rook to d2, I guess, and then you move your other, you try to move your other rook over. But objectively speaking, it's it's kind of like a shot it in the dark. Work. Yeah, it doesn't really work, but. I mean, I would tell you if like Julia wasn't down with score, she wouldn't have done for it. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, at this point, a nine, uh, sorry, eleven point difference. It's kind of do yeah, whatever you. It doesn't matter. Already. Yeah, it, it does not like... matter. Yeah, she just tries. Try, try whatever you know. Yeah. Test things out. All right, king to h two, f four, and then if the queen takes f four, you have rook takes g two, so queen to g four. They can take uh, on d4 at any moment and take on b4. Maybe. Well, the okay, queen's just d4. trapped. Yeah, the queen is trapped? Oh, yes. Wow. And that goes to show, you know, like you can try with this, but very unlikely that it might. So now we have the last game running. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because it's hard to believe it will finish. In... Oh, the London system. Finally, something which I can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so here, no, this is not a good move because of queen b6. So knight bd2 is the best um, in terms of precision. Knight bd2, got it. Yeah, but uh, still. Actually, I mean, if you play without bishop g3, then in my opinion, you should take on f4 because now I can take on d6 and play knight e5 and f4. And at least, you know, I have an easy setup. Mm -hmm. Not that I have advantage, of course, but an easy setup. Yeah, this is one of those like just kind of normal Londonish positions. It's not I the normal ones because, okay. The bishop was not moved to g3, but it's actually an interesting alternative line. I won some games also with that. But I'm yeah. thinking the h7 pawn might look a little bit weak here. You have to be afraid of bishop takes h7, knight g5, and queen I just knew like Yulia, but this is not working because of this is premature because F5, you don't yes. have the check on d3 to make it work. And you, yes, because you miss the bishop on c1, but it's a nice motto. Absolutely. It's called the Greek gift, guys. And unfortunately, it just doesn't work sometimes because you don't have enough material. But as we've talked about, Yulia's, you know, just. Yes. Maybe king of six, queen h4, and they would agree on the draw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can potentially go for that. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, this, this is just, they're just lost. This is lost now. Yeah. King's safe now. There's no attack. Um, Queen to h4 was maybe a good try. There are ideas with knight to e4 check here. So mm, yeah, I mean, like I think I think you have you have to repeat moves here. I mean, at least in the bullet game, just go king to g6. Uh, can I play queen h7 and then f4 and I pretend I made you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh no, this Not is pinned, sure but I h4. You. Ah, I'm it's pinned. pinned though. Yeah, but it's then pinned. I, then I'm then I stop my pretensions. <laughs> this other, yeah, that's pinned, unfortunately. But, but it would have been a nice mate otherwise. In a classical game, that's something you, that you just would never play because it's not yeah. working yet, right? But in a bullet game, it has the opportunity of working. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Oof. All right. Uh, uh, uh. And now the end is near, and so I face the final curtains. So, is there some tricks I missed? No, proper. Well, white, oh, white. Is... No, still black is. Yeah, black is just going to win. Hmm. 
This was close that she would uh, change the tables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was this was an interesting game for sure. It's I'm really happy to see actually Yulia did not lose her like fighting spirit at all and just mm -hmm. still playing for the win and just trying her best because that's really important as well. I mean, this is a good tactic, but unfortunately the pawns are just too fast. Yeah, they're a bit faster. Yeah, this one will push all the way down. And that will be an easy wrap up for Anna. Yeah. Queen C5 is finishing. This is just, well, I actually like everything. <laughs> everything is finishing. There's no way for the pawns to, to really extend. Yeah. I'm gonna grab all those pawns, gobble them up. Yeah. Well, we can hope for stalemate. Mm. Fortunately, did not no. quite happen just design, yeah. Well, that was definitely, you know, one of the, um, I would say Anna played some very amazing games throughout the whole match and the bullet just did not go in Yulia's favor. It was quite, quite, oh. quite uh, painful, but we will be back really soon with the post-match interview. So we'll see you all in three minutes.
All right, and we're back with both Anna and Yulia for this post-match interview. How are you feeling today, Yulia? You played some really, really nice games. Um, I love seeing the fighting spirit right, right through to the end. So just wanted to, you know, ask about your thoughts for today's match. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, I uh, have the first experience to play in uh, such uh, strong tournament. Uh, so uh, I think uh, it is uh, my main problem in this match because I don't have uh, many experience and uh, my opponents mm -hmm. uh, playing very well. So uh, it is. Uh, uh, it was a really good fight and a good experience for me, for you. And uh, I uh, congrats uh, Anna for this uh, victory. So, yeah, I'm really glad to hear that. And I, I definitely hope, you know, you're going to bounce back even stronger than before. It definitely is quite challenging to play against, you know, former speech as champion Anna. So I'll shoot over to you, Elizabeth. Yes, I'm the one who asks you questions, Anna, because I'm the one who know you better. <laughs> so tell and me you like, don't know the questions, I guess. <laughs> well, my questions are always sneaky, as you know. So Anna, um, first of all, probably it's interesting for most of the viewers. Did you have a special strategy before the game, or was your strategy as usual playing safe? Um, I just tried to play. Uh what I prepared a bit and uh, what I felt comfortable with. And yeah, Yulia, thank you for the greetings. Uh, I, I don't know, uh, I think I had some troubles with uh, French in the first uh, portion of the match, five plus one. Uh, but then I think it went better. So I think it was uh, pretty smoothly. So if, uh, it, if, if, if like the strategy worked, then I thought like there is no need to change it and I continued playing the lines which I played from the very beginning with white pieces and with black, I was changing something. And uh, in the last portion, one plus one, Yulia changed uh, starting to play before lines, uh, but I think I, I had comfortable positions after that. Um, yeah. I have actually another question, if I may ask one more. Go there was ahead. a game very, where you repeat moves and you were totally superior. Was it like a kind of strategy just to collect points to basically win time and save the match. But as I already like um, pointed out in one particular game, I don't know if you can follow me. There was a moment you um, well repeated moves with the queen. I'm not sure it was like queen d5, queen e4. And we were wondering why you didn't play for the yeah, yeah, queen e4, queen f5, the check. Yeah. Uh, like yes, I remember that game and I kind of felt my position was better and I was also much better on time at that moment, but somehow uh, I felt that I started to lose control over the position. And uh, I thought like there may be some C3 coming, some sacrifices on D4 maybe, or just some opening the position. I didn't like my bishop on G7 that much. And I just thought, okay, it's safer since I already had a big advantage in the score or just to repeat the moves and then, then to start a new game. Because yeah, I really felt it's like it may go wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally understand that. It's always better. Uh, Elizabeth was joking that you really like safe positions <laughs> throughout the entire commentary. So I, I do like hearing that from you. Yeah. Now, Thank you both so much for joining us. And once again, congratulations to you, Anna. And I definitely hope to see Yulia, you playing a lot of these events in the future. Um, hope your first, you know, kind of experience with it went absolutely amazingly. Yeah, thank you too. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Take care. You All right. So that was the final part of the match between Anna and Yulia. Um, Anna is going to move on to play Harika in the quarterfinals. And we are going to be having a lot of really exciting games upcoming. But before we even go into the quarterfinals, tomorrow is going to be between Ho Yi Fan and international master Gulnar Mamadova from Azerbaijan. So lots of really exciting things. What do you think about tomorrow? Well, I mean, the odds 
are clearly in uh, for your fun's favor but mm -hmm. okay the thing is like online chess is still a little bit different than otp chess and since mama doba um proved that she could qualify in a very strong field i mean we should understand that underdogs can bite <laughs> Right, absolutely. Um, I'm not familiar. Has Holy Fan been playing any tournaments recently? Any um, because she, she met, might she met her masters? No, she finished her masters in Oxford University. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can recall, she went to US for some very interesting job opportunities. So currently, I would say she's doing everything else but chess. Besides, she was also announced a professor in her China's mm -hmm. in her China city or in her home country at least so she's also a professor now by academic status so that means um she didn't play any chess as far i can think of so her first tournament is actually really this um speeds women's championship and you can be very happy that she actually agreed as she seems to be a semi half politician already or very important. yeah she she's been absolutely amazing i mean i've known her since I was like, I've looked up to her since I was like a little kid. So it's been absolutely awesome seeing her do everything and then go to you know, become a professor and also play chess. So uh, tomorrow's match is going to be really exciting. It will be one of her first tournaments of recent, in recent memory uh, with the speech chess. And of course, she will also be playing in the Champions Tour. So, you know, lots of exciting games will be upcoming tomorrow. But we are going to sign off today. Thank you very much, Elizabeth, for joining me. Hope you have fun. I definitely learned a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. And make sure you guys are staying tuned for tomorrow's awesome match. See you, everybody. Thank you, Nemo. Thanks, chat. See you soon. Bye.